30th of December. And we're going on a road trip. You see my washing behind me. Um, yeah, we're going to do some book shopping. There is a secondhand book exchange about three hours drive from here. So when Rupert offered to drive me instead of driving myself, I said yes. Get you a man who will drive you three hours both ways to so you can buy books. That's all I have to say. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. It's gonna be a good day. Hopefully we don't hit any kind of traffic. Hopefully everyone that is planning on leaving Auckland has already left. Um, yeah, I thought we would take you along for the ride. Show you a bit about beautiful country. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing today. Bye. We got the goods. Um, I got a couple of hash browns and a bacon egg muffin and a flat white. That is my breakfast order. McDonald's. I wish I had have gotten the iced coffee now because I saw a girl with an iced coffee and that looked really nice. Anyway, we just stopped. I just put petrol in the car and it's really busy. Um, there's a lot of people obviously heading out of town for New Year and I'm pretty sure the place that we're going is like where every Aucklander is going for New Year this year. So it's going to be fun. It's going to feel like we're going away, but we're not because we're just going to turn around and come straight back home. Um, yeah, hopefully we don't get stuck in too much traffic. I'm excited though. Pray that there are good books and we aren't just driving three hours for nothing. Okay, I'm gonna eat my food. Oh, and I'm filming on my phone today because I didn't want to bring my camera, so hopefully this is good quality. 4K, so you yeah. know. some books. hot in that warehouse um 
place was massive, so much to look through. I could have definitely spent longer there um, looking. I only kind of skinned the memoir section, so I didn't have a chance to get a proper look in there because it was too fucking hot. Um, but I did get a few good bits, so um, I'll show them to you once we're on. I'm not doing a car, a car haul. Uh, we are currently though at a gas station, petrol station, because something's wrong with our car, which we were worried might happen, and it did. And now we're freaking out. Pray that we get home. That's all we need. We made it home, safe and sound. We did have some slight uh, mechanical car issues. Um, we're fine though, we obviously made it home. The car is fine we think, it was still driving so we just kind of kept going because we needed to make it home and then it happened again like just before we got home so <sighs> Car's definitely going to the mechanics tomorrow. Anyway, thought I would show you quickly the books that I picked up from this little road trip that could potentially be turning into a very expensive road trip. Uh, we will see. The place. So the place that we went to today, I don't know if I said to you, it's called Xanadu Book Exchange. It's basically just like a massive warehouse full of secondhand books. I believe you can take books there to sell for credit uh, or cash, I'm not sure. And yeah, I would say that what mostly their stock is like fiction. And to me it felt like a very kind of uh, large charity shop. In terms of the, the types of books there. Um, it wasn't a lot of stuff that I was interested in, considering how many books there were, but uh, in saying that, I did pick up some good stuff, and I'm really happy with what I found today. But yeah, I wouldn't probably, like, make a special trip to go back if I was passing by. Um, I would definitely say check it out. Otherwise... Yeah, it's, it's just hit and miss with those places sometimes, like, you kind of, you never know what you're going to find. I mean, there could have been stuff that I missed. It was so fucking hot in there. I couldn't look for too much longer. Uh, okay, anyway, let's just show the books. So the first book that I picked up was uh, Asymmetry by Lisa Halliday. This is a book that I once got out from the library and then never read it, so... Um, I read the first few pages and I was intrigued enough to get it out of the library and then time just got away from me um, and I didn't finish it so I was happy to find it today. I don't remember what it was about really. Um, it says here, Alice, a young editor, begins an affair with Ezra Blazer, a world famous and much older writer. Uh, this is in New York, and then it says, At Heathrow Airport, a ma, an economist en route to Kurdistan, is detained by immigration and locked in a holding room. And some years later, Ezra Blazer reappears as a castaway on Desert Island Discs to reflect on his legacy, life, and love. Desert Island Discs is one of my favourite podcasts. That's probably why I picked this book up. Uh, it's playful and inventive, tender and humane. 
tinder, tinder, tinder humane asymmetry travels the globe, inhabits multiple perspectives and transforms from a vivid and unconventional love story into a novel that challenges the power plays and imbalances of contemporary life between male and female, young and old, west and middle east, talent and luck and the personal and the polit political. Sounds fabulous. Uh, next I picked up the Great Fire by Shirley Hazard. Haven't read any of Shirley Hazard's work. She is an author that I stumbled upon when I was looking for a book to buy for Jessica. Um, hadn't ever heard of her. She was someone whose name was kind of like uh, surrounded by... She was surrounding a bunch of authors that Jessica and I both like. So I thought she could be quite good to try as like a new person um this story sounds a bit different it's like a love story set in uh war-torn asia and stricken europe people must reinvent their lives and expectations and learn from their past to dream again a man and a woman seek to recover self-reliance and tenderness struggling to reclaim their humanity i mean those aren't words that are like grabbing me to want to read it sounds like kind of a basic outline of a story and nothing really like interesting enough to really grab me but I do want to try Shirley Hazard's writing I have purchased a collection of her short stories so if I don't like her novel hopefully I like her short stories uh next I picked up The Summer Without Men by Siri Hustved this is a writer who I want to read. I have one of her books. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but yeah, this kind of sounded quite good from the blurb and I've seen it around. And it says, Mayor Fredrickson, the wry, vituperative, sorry, my brain fog and the fact that I'm not wearing my glasses right now, not a good combo. The wry vituperative, I don't know what that means. Tragic comic poet narrator of The Summer Without Men has been forced to re-examine her life. One day out of the blue, after 30 years of marriage, Mia's husband, a renowned neuroscientist, Test, ask for her ask her for a pause anyway you don't want to hear the rest of it I was ho I'm hoping that this has got some really beautiful writing some really kind of um, thinky interior uh, narrative from the main character as she's trying to figure out her shit that kind of stuff like just this this seems like typical comfort reading for me so that's why I picked it up Next, I picked up Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid. Um, a lot of people recently that I know have read A Small Place, Small Place, by Jamaica and said it was absolutely amazing. So I'm definitely trying to get my hands on that, but saw this today and I think this one is all supposed to be, supposed to be quite good too, so I picked it up. This is an uncorrected proof, so I couldn't even read you. Oh, yes, I could. Uh, it says here, Lucy is a 19-year-old West Indian girl. Uh, Lucy, a 19-year-old West Indian girl, escapes her mother and her island past to work in New York as an OPF for Lois and Mariah and their four young daughters. As she cares for them day by day, as the ring of her outward independence, independence widens and she begins to unravel the mysteries of her own sexuality, Lucy comes to understand the love she feels for her mother and the love she feels for Mariah and the longing ache she has for her native land. Ooh, a uh, bit of a queer life story there. That'll be good for my um, 2022 two goal of wanting to read more queer stories. So, yeah, excited to find that. Then I found The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I have only read Sula by Toni Morrison, but I definitely want to read this and Beloved. Um, I don't really know what this is about. But yeah, I've heard really good things about this and I really like Toni Morrison's 
kind of experimental, weird um, storytelling. So, excited for that. Uh, and then the last book that I picked up was Nobody Is Ever Missing by Catherine Lacey. I have Q by Catherine Lacey that I really want to read. Um, and then I also have Certain American Stories, which is a collection of short stories um, by her. This is actually a novel that um, is set in New Zealand. So it's Catherine Lacey is a, an American writer, but she has, in this story, her main character flees her life in New York to come to New Zealand. And yeah, the only reason I picked it up is because I have other stuff by her and why not read a story about um, my own country? Okay, those are the books that I got today on my little road trip. I'm really tired now. Um, yeah, it was fun. Definitely fun to kind of get out of the city for the day. Although the place that we did go is like where everyone from Auckland is going to for New Year. So it was kind of just manic, crazy busy. But yeah, it was fun. It was nice to do something, get out of the house. I'm very tired. I'm going to go make myself a drink and then get the fog. Or whatever this is. I don't kind of want to do more of these type videos like um, book shopping videos like vlogs but then also I want to um, talk about the, the shops a little bit more so I want to do a series on like Auckland bookshops and then Auckland like Auckland independent bookshops and then Auckland secondhand bookshops. Um, yeah I think that would be fun. I mean, I'd be keen to see something like that. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Kia pai to whatever. Have a good day. Have a good evening. Bye.